Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahabushai, Bahasham, Barakahakwadash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahabushai. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule and teach well. In peace and salutations to you, sincere Aki, I'm out there, pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May your brothers endure until the end. This is the brother Raya with another video, and in this video, I'll be profiling a clip from This Is John Williams' YouTube channel titled, Americans Prepare for Food Crisis, Food Banks, Lines a Mile Long, and hey, just more prophecy coming out, hey, the decline of uh, the U.S. economy, you know, food insecurity, you name it, hey, Apostle Tahar has deemed 2024 to be the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. And ever since the year started off, things haven't skipped a beat. And in this uh, video on John Williams' YouTube channel, I'm going to play about the first uh, five minutes or so. And this is a fair use copyright disclaimer. I do not own any of the footage in this clip, nor do I stand to gain from it monetarily. It is simply for educational purposes. Hey, what's up, guys? John here. Wall Street Journal reported that maybe you should skip breakfast to save money. The CEO of Kellogg just came out on CNBC and told Americans to offset the rising cost of inflation. Maybe you should eat cereal for dinner. Maybe your kids should eat cereal for dinner. So we're Great. You can't afford anything good or halfway decent, so just eat more cheap poison. Advertising about cereal for dinner, if you think about the cost of cereal, for a family versus what they might otherwise do, that's gonna be much more affordable. And so you have to ask yourself, Janet Yellen promised us inflation was gonna be transitory. We're gonna go back to a 2% inflation rate, everything was gonna be okay. We expect somewhat higher inflation over the next several months, but um, that's, that's a transitory thing. It doesn't seem okay because food bank lines are through the roof. Demand for food stamps and SNAP benefits and welfare are at levels in which we've never before seen. You have to ask yourself, well, how can Americans hold on to their cars, the average car payment being over $700 a month? How can they pay the rent that has doubled over the last several years? Dell Technologies' smart, smart infrastructure data. powered by Intel Xeon is staying ahead of changing workload demands and in I don't think they're going to be able to. Look at the rising price of cars. Sales are strong, but many Americans are having trouble making the monthly payments. One in four Americans are struggling to pay their rent. Instead, what I think is going to happen is Americans are going to start prioritizing feeding themselves over feeding their creditors. Take a look at this video of the CEO of Kellogg. This is unreal. When consumers are under pressure. So some of the things that we're doing is first messaging. we got to reach the consumer where they are. So we're advertising about cereal for dinner. If you think about the cost of cereal for a family versus what they might otherwise do, that's going to be much more affordable. Think about that. Cereal for dinner. I'm going to break this down. I'm going to show you exactly what's going on because I think we are in a period in this economy which we've never before seen. We've never seen affordability problems at this level. And when you look at all... And hey... Prices going up and affordability problems are all a part of biblical prophecy, things that would be taking place in these last days that we're currently living in. This is Revelation chapter 6. I'm going to start at verse 5. And the header reads, the third seal, famine, food insecurity. And you know, this is talking about the so-called four horsemen of the apocalypse, which are just a uh, symbolic of different events that would be taking place in these last days. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Verse six. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now let's go to that word penny in the Strong's, which is G1220, denarion. And in the outline of biblical usage, it reads, denarius containing ten, a Roman silver coin in New Testament times. And hey, we're living in modern day Rome right now. <laughs> it took its name from it being equal to ten asses. And those were uh, Roman 
bronze coins, later copper coins, a number after 215 BC increased to 16, about 3.898 grams or 0.1375 ounces. It was the principal silver coin of the Roman Empire. Think about it like uh, the U.S. dollar being the principal form of currency in this modern day Rome. From the parable of the laborers in the vineyard, it would seem that a denarius was then the ordinary pay for a day's wages. And in the ancient world, and you know, in the law of the scriptures, whatever, uh, when a man worked in a single day, he was paid that very same day. Unlike this wicked system we live in right now, where most people get a wage where they're paid every two weeks. So when we think about this today, your entire, you know, two weeks paycheck going for what? A measure of wheat for a penny, a measure of barley for a penny, just to buy, you know, the basic necessities at the grocery store and with the way things are looking. And like the CEO of Kellogg said, hey, to get cereal, paying hundreds of dollars to get, you know, not even a half a grocery cart full of items. And then on top of that, what else is rising? Car, you know, car note payments, you know, rent payments, you know, gasoline, student loan debts, et cetera, et cetera. Everything in the United States of America is in the red. People are drowning in debt. And we've just about reached that boiling point, that breaking point where, you know, everything is going to collapse. All the changes that are incoming in 2024, you can see one thing and one thing clearly. Things are about to get a lot worse. And when everyday Americans hold a, per, you know, a majority of basically all and all the changes that are incoming in 2024, you can see one thing and one thing clearly. Things are about to get a lot worse. Hey, things are about to get a lot, a lot worse. And you see that little arrow going down. What's that, sim, uh, what's that synonymous with? Crashes and stocks on the stock market. This is Zephaniah chapter 1, verses 10 to 11. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate. And you know, a fish gate is what? A marketplace where uh, commodities and goods are sold. And what is Wall Street? A, a marketplace where commodities and goods are traded and sold. And a howling from the second and a great crashing from the hills. Here's a visualization of that crashing of the hills because when those uh, stock market arrows from green, you know, go to red and go down, they're jagged and look like the formation. And when everyday of Americans, hills. let's problems get that one more at time. This level. And when you look at all the changes that are incoming in 2024, you can see one thing and one thing clearly. The things are about to get a lot worse. The crashing when, of the hills. And also in the scriptures, hills and mountains can be symbolic for uh, governments. And hey, these governments globally are going into recession you know, inflation and hyperinflation. And then what's next? Collapse. Britain's in a recession. You know, Germany's in a recession. Japan has entered a recession. And the U.S. is not far from behind. How ye inhabitants of Maktesh, for all the merchant people are cut down. All they that bear silver are cut off. Crashes the Great Depression when people lose everything. When everyday Americans hold a, per, you know, a majority of basically all the assets, cars, houses, I mean, most of it is held by the middle class. And when you have the middle class struggling at a level on which they've never before struggled, what are they gonna do with these assets? What are they gonna do with all this? They're gonna have to walk away. That's what's gonna happen. Hey, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny the merchants being cut off, and what? All day that bear silver being cut off. We're gonna see millions of people walking away from cars, homes, businesses, as the world gets harder. I'm gonna break this down, I'll give you the facts. Please hit the like button, YouTube will share the content, educate more people about what's going on in America. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we would love to help you. At my company, greatcreditfast.com, that's Great Credit Fast Strategy Session. Take a look at this. So, Denver, food banks, is higher than ever, right? Demand for Denver food banks higher than ever. Emergency services change amid migrant influx, right? 
So all these new people as well that we are feeding. And hey, this whole migrant situation is just going to further expound the problems. More people entering the country. And what have, uh, what are they talking about? You know, giving them money from U.S. taxpayers to clothe, feed and feed and house them. Up in New York City, the mayor was talking about giving them a debit card with $10,000 on it. And what's that only going to do? You know, further inflate and devalue the money. And best believe that that's all by design. The elites, you know, the powers that be, such as the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, are getting ready to liquidate the U.S. and the U.S. dollar because they want to bring in that new digital cashless society where everybody's going to be on the grid. And in order to interact with things, what are you going to have to have? The M-A-R-K-O-F-T-H-E-B-E-A-S-T in Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 to 18, that RFID slash NFC, C-HIP-I-M-P-L-A-N-T, in the right hand or in the forehead. You can't even feed our own people. Then, as millions wait on food stamp approvals, Fed tells states to speed it up. And this all came up, by the way. This is February, this is today, February 23rd. This is today, February 23rd. Understaffed agencies shake off pandemic cobwebs. Delaying aid sometimes by months. Alaska has some of the most expensive groceries in the country. Many rural Alaskans depend on food stamps and many grocery stores rely on customers use of those benefits to support their business. So when the state delayed residents request for food aid, and months at a time, the crisis threw entire communities into disarray. We are seeing increased demand at food pantries and soup kitchens, says Rachel Miller, Chief Advocacy Officer of the Food Bank of Alaska, which provides food to partner organizations across the state and helps Alaskans apply for food stamps. There's a huge strain on the system. The backlog has had a direct effect on people's ability to eat and food banks' ability to serve themselves, right? Then. And what do you think is going to happen? As more and more of uh, these Americans out here, which a lot of them are working homeless or what, flooding these food banks, those store shelves are going to get emptier and emptier, you know, food bank shelves, as well as these grocery store shelves, because, you know, there's going to be continued disruptions to the supply chain. What's also going up in New York, you've got those uh, truckers talking about not delivering goods up there. And, uh, you know, however that plays out. As, uh, you know, divisions and tensions and the situation gets worse out here in the U.S., you're going to see more drastic measures like that take place. But this is Second Ezra chapter 6 in the Apocrypha, verse 22. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. And that's talking about, you know, farmers' croplands. Because what do you do when you plant seeds? You sow them. And we know that through adverse weather events, you know... <laughs> However you want to look at it, it's ultimately through the will of the Most High, but we know that there are man-made, in quotes, aspects to it as well. You know, adverse weather events have been disrupting farmers' abilities to plant a sufficient amount of crops, which is going to further lead to what? Less and less, you know, f food getting to these store shelves. And on top of that, again, those supply chain disruptions. And another thing that we've been seeing over these last couple of years food processing plants mysteriously uh, burning down or getting destroyed. The full storehouses, food pantry shelves, grocery store shelves shall suddenly be found empty. This came out two days ago. Local food banks could have to have a wait list as WSC program faces a $1 billion shortfall. A billion dollar shortfall. Philadelphia, we are just weeks away from potential government shutdowns. Much deadlines are quickly approaching as Congress tries to agree on national budget. Federal benefits like WIC, the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for women, infants, and children could be in jeopardy. Local food banks that receive federal funding would have to make up the difference. At the same time, the price of groceries they buy is increasing. The Director of Development at LCH, Health and Community Services, joined CBS in Philly for many of our families. We have to decide between purchasing food and getting their health care. And what is this going to mean for, let's say, for example, auto lenders, right? Millennials losing their car came up three days ago. Millennials are increasingly seeing their cars.
face repossession with calls to attorneys regarding the topic reaching levels not seen since the pandemic. Amid economic pressures from sticky inflation, increasing layoffs, announcements, and escalating living costs, the millennial demographic is particularly vulnerable. Financial distress signals are loud and clear as individuals struggle to navigate the challenges posed by the economy that's squeezing their wallets and threatening their mobility, according to Legal Shield's January Consumer Stress Legal Index issued on Tuesday. Measure of wheat for a penny, a measure of barley for a penny, your car note, you know, costing a penny, or uh, more than you can afford, your rent, gasoline, the list goes on and on. Sewer finances inquiries generally decreased over the month but there has been an increase in calls regarding car repossessions and billing disputes, particularly among Gen X and um, millennials. So you see the trend. Lawmakers in America can't afford their rent. And look at this uh, woman on that image, you know, a so-called black woman, you know, so-called Israelite woman. It's all going to continue to get worse. It's all going to continue to get worse for leveraged landlords. It's going to continue to get worse for, you know, car lenders, credit card companies. And what's going to ultimately happen is we're going to continue to see credit con credit conditions contract. That's what's going to happen because they're going to start looking at the writing on the wall. I mean, look at this. Single mom, Caitlin Colbert, watched as rent for her two-bedroom apartment doubled, then tripled, and then quadrupled over a decade in Denver from $750 to $3,300. I hope she's not paying. Measure a wheat for a penny, measure a barley for a penny. $33 for this, because this apartment looks, you know, nothing special. Every month, like millions of Americans, Cobra juggled her cost, pay rent or swim, team fees for one of her three kids, rent or school supplies, rent or grocery. I thought you women were supposed to be, uh, you know, strong and independent. I don't need no man. Paul Blood, a social worker who helps pay to stay financially afloat, would often arrive home, notices of a 30-day to pay rent, and a late fee or face eviction. Every month, you just got a budget, and then you still fall short, she said, adding what became a monthly refrain. Well, this month, we have at least $13 left. $13. The average cost of inflation in an American family is $1,000. $13 left. And hey, to you women out there, especially you women of the tribes, you so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American women, at the time of your uh, judgment is quickly approaching. You've been living high off the hog off of Esau Edom, the so-called white man system, making big daddy government, you know, papa. But hey, Esau is cutting away those benefits from you. And you've, and you've done what? Screwed over the men of your nation and put them on child support, got them in jail, you know, all kind of shit. So those chickens are coming home to roost. Now I'm going to close it out in Isaiah chapter 32, verses 9 to 12. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Wick, section 8, these high-paying jobs. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. For the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. No more government benefits, losing those uh, good jobs, your money not stretching, you not having a man in the house because you ran him away and you know you've ridden that uh, CC. The gathering shall not come. Tremble ye women that are at ease, be troubled ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. They shall lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields. For the fruitful vine and i just uh watched a video earlier showing a bunch of you so-called uh black women or you judite women talking about uh oh we apologize to you so-called black men for you know all the horrific things we've done to you and you know when you go to the comment section you got a lot of cold-hearted responses in there hey nobody's hearing it anymore the time, like I said, the time for the judgment of you hard headed, you know, rebellious women, you know, all you women in America are going to get it. But especially you Israelite women are at hand. And, you know, in general, you know, men, women, child, what you name it, a hey, great judgment of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai is quickly coming. And as it says in Matthew, chapter 24, verse eight, all these are the beginning of sorrows. 
We're just in the beginning stages right now. It's going to get a hell of a lot worse from here on out. So that's it with this video. With this video, I hope you sincere Akiyame and Akwath were edified. Just keep strong. As we can clearly see, we are almost out of this final wicked captivity of the heathen nations, chiefly of the Edomites. And as always, I'm going to say, Abad Babal, Kwam Yasharala, and until next time, Shalom.